Hey everybody, today's video is about making phone calls, something that I absolutely hate doing under any circumstances, but I found that it is often very important and when you put off an important phone call, um, there can be a lot of problems that are caused, especially when it's a call you need to make but maybe don't realize it. So this can happen with doctor's appointments, other kinds of appointments, customer service calls, all sorts of things. But when there's something that you need to get done and someone else is reliant on that happening, then you need to make those calls at a schedule that suits you to make sure that thing gets done on time. So for example, if you are trying to schedule a surgery, and I say this as, as something from experience when I got my um, uh, nose fixed when it was broken, um, I was trying to schedule a surgery and it took a very long time to do that because they said, oh yeah, I'll call you back in an hour and then they never did. And then I realized that three days later, I'd get, I'd, I'd either get a call from them or I'd be like, hey, they never called me, I'd call them and I'd get another run around and be told I'd call back and eventually I just got so fed up that I said, no, we're dealing with this now. Um, that's not a point that you want to get to. It's the sort of thing that when it comes to phone calls and comes to getting things done, the longer that it gets put off, whether it's your fault or that people are giving you the runaround on the phone, the more stress and more crises that can happen and you don't want that to happen. So there are a couple things to do. When you're on the phone and there's, you know, the, the thing that you want to accomplish can't be accomplished right at this moment according to the person you're talking to. If you're sure that that's the resolution or you're just too tired of talking about it, say, okay, when can I expect to hear from you? And they'll either give you a specific time if they're good or they'll say, well, I'm not sure. I mean, a lot of the times they just won't give you a specific time. So you got to push for one, even like a window or a day, even if it's an entire day, do that. And then you can make a note of that, put it on the reminders and make sure you call them uh, in that period at that time or at a time that is most suitable for you during the day in the event that uh, they don't hold up their end of the bargain. But also, it helps to have that reminder because if they are going to call at that time, at least you remember that's the case and you don't ignore a number you don't recognize or an unknown number or something like that. And now we get into the bad paranoid stuff, which I wish I could say is actually paranoid for real, but I kind of think it's not. Um, and these two things are recording your calls and keeping a call log. It's always good to keep a call log when calling customer service or anybody who you need to call several times just to know I called then, um, on this date at this time, this is how long the call lasted, and this is what we talked about in like a couple of words. Um, I think that's really important so when you're calling back you have a timeline of exactly what you did, you can explain that and then you know everything's accurate and you're going in there with the most accurate information. But why should you record calls? This is usually something you shouldn't have to do but the reason that it's useful is because on those you know it's you back up your data on your computer because it's gonna break eventually like you know that's gonna happen you may get a new computer before that or change the drive or whatever and you won't have to worry about it but you get insurance just in case because you don't want to get stuck with something way worse than you know paying a little extra for that insurance in time or money or whatever so the same thing goes with call recording. If you're making a call that might result in something bad, you should record it. It's very easy to do. You just sit next to a computer, record audio in whatever program you want. I mean, if you're on a Mac, you can just press Command, Control, Option, N, and make an audio recording document and record through the speaker in your computer. I'm sure there are tons of other ways you can do this. Um, but basically, it's not that hard. Put your phone on speaker, Set, press record, talk, stop when you're done, name the call according to your call log, and that's that. Uh, the reason that this is useful, though, is if you need to go back and look, or hear, I guess, uh, what you said on a call or what they said on a previous call, so you can reference it on a future call, or in some cases, um, you can reference it on, like actually in the call, you can play the representative saying what you say they said to the person on the phone in case they don't believe you, which happens way more often than it should. Um, there are a lot of other reasons though that can vary from getting very angry at a terrible customer service call, posting it on the internet and actually getting the company to do more than you would have expected um, from just asking over the phone. And in the most paranoid category, which uh, is unfortunately where I may be headed in one of my uh, phone issues is a lawsuit. Sometimes if you have a company 
who is doing something wrong to you, has taken your money, is not providing a product that they promised or service or whatever, if there's, if there's something going on and you've called again and again and again and this has gone on for a long time, if you record all those calls and you, just, and you have to go through a lawsuit, you can prove it. And this, I'm not, an, uh, I'm not a legal expert so I can't say this definitively, but they record the calls. You consent when you call through via a message by not hanging up that you consent to the call being recorded and you have to object to that after a representative picks up if you don't want that to happen. They're being recorded, they have consented, you have consented, so there is that two-party consent there, I think. I mean, that makes sense to me. But you should consult a lawyer before you end up actually doing anything with that information. Um, but if you're in a single-party consent, in which you are the only one who has to consent um, to a recorded call, then it's no problem at all. Either way, there are benefits to it. Even if you don't have the ability to use that call in court, you still have exact evidence of what was said. And you know, some th th those calls could be uh, could be requested from the court, demanded that the company gives it because if they're recording it, then there's a copy, and you can say I consent, and then they have to turn them over. Maybe they don't. Maybe you have a copy. Now I'm getting into like seriously paranoid territory. But the point is, it's very easy to record your calls. Hopefully, you'll never have to use them, but you might as well do it if there's a possibility something could go wrong, because then you have every piece of evidence at your disposal and can go ahead and fix the problem intelligently and efficiently and with absolute truth. So that's what you should do when it comes to making phone calls. All of those things can help you out. They don't require a lot of effort. You just plan a little bit in advance for what could happen and then it will save you a lot of issues down the line.